Minecraft is a mysterious and strange game. The world has so much to discover, including sweeping landscapes, vast structures, and interesting creatures. Some of these are hostile, such as the zombie, skeleton, and, of course, the creeper. But there's a group of mobs who are evil in a darker way. They don't mindlessly attack the player with arrows or explosions. Rather, they use their intelligence for something much more sinister. They push the limits of what's possible, no matter the casualties. These are the Illagers, one of Minecraft's least understood mobs. What are they doing in their outposts and huge mansions in the woods? Why do they raid villages? Who even are they? Welcome to Deep Dive, a series where I explore some of the more obscure and hidden aspects of games. Tonight, we will be examining the Illagers, looking for clues, both obvious and hidden in plain sight. Hopefully, through this process, we will learn who they are and how they fit into the lore of Minecraft. Join me for a dive beneath the waves. To begin, we need to clear up some terminology. It's important that we recognize that the term Illager represents a group of mobs, including the Pillager, the Vindicator, and the Evoker. We'll look at the specific differences between these later on, but for now we can talk about the Illagers as a group. It's clear that the Illagers have a close connection to the Villagers. They share certain physical characteristics, including an oblong head and a large nose. Even their name is a pun on the word Villager. However, there are some crucial differences, both in their appearance and their behavior. To understand these differences, we need to have a baseline idea of who the villagers are. Let's take a look at them first. I'll preface this section with a disclaimer. I'm not an anthropologist, so I apologize if I make any mistakes in the following analysis. Anyways, villagers live, unsurprisingly, in villages, which are scattered throughout the world. They display many characteristics not found in other mobs. The villagers have constructed moderately sized settlements and have adapted to many different biome types, from scorching deserts to frigid tundras. Although their clothes and architecture are determined by the specific climate, they nonetheless show evidence of a shared culture. For example, all villagers walk with their arms together, hiding the bare skin of their hands from others. They also exhibit specialization of labor. Different villagers have unique professions, including farmers and butchers, as well as more complicated employment like cartographers and clerics. These specializations work together in a bustling economy, with emerald as currency. A Fletcher may not know how to make food, but that doesn't matter, because the farmer does, and bread is just a few emeralds away. So although the various villages may be separated by distance, they've collectively learned how to thrive on their own. For some reason, we don't really see evidence of inter-village communication. Each town appears to operate independently. Perhaps a good descriptor would be tribes of villagers. They have developed enough domestication and irrigation to settle down, but there's no evidence of a power structure between villages. There's no nation of villagers, just small, independent towns scattered about. Illagers, on the other hand, play by a different set of rules. They are clearly enemies of villagers, even to the point of sending out patrols to find and attack villagers. Illagers occasionally participate in more coordinated attacks against villagers known as raids. Waves of every type of illager will spawn during these raids. Both patrols and raids are led by captains carrying the same ominous banner. This implies that pillagers, vindicators, and evokers see themselves as a cohesive group under a flag. Furthermore, they must have a way of communicating with one another across long distances in order to coordinate raids. As we'll see, the various illager types are quite spread out, yet they're still capable of banding together when they want to. So it's already clear that there are some fundamental differences in the way that illagers act compared to villagers. They have clearly defined leaders and at least some level of strategic planning during the raids. More importantly though, it would seem as though they are much more capable of accomplishing shared goals. The illagers collectively want something. But what? We'll get to that in a little bit. Remember how one of the important traits of the villagers is specialization? Well, illagers also exhibit this trait. However, it's much more extreme for them, to the point where their abilities seem almost totally different from one another. As I alluded to earlier, these specializations are so distinct that the Illagers are split into several different mobs. Let's take a look at one of them. The infantry of the group are the Pillagers. They spawn in outpost structures that can occur in any biome where villages might be found. They're quite tall, enabling good visibility over a long distance. The Pillagers complement this with crossbows powerful weapons with higher range, accuracy, and damage compared to bows. They use scarecrows as target practice, refining their skills in their free time. Furthermore, some pillagers are sent out on patrol in groups of five. 
patrols wander around, killing enemies on foot. So what is the role of the pillagers? Well, pillagers are experts at keeping unwanted enemies away, in this case, villagers. It seems as though their goal is to establish control over the territory between villages. Outposts are their hub, and patrols are their boots on the ground, offering a harsh reminder to any villager foolish enough to wander about. The result of this is that villagers are essentially trapped within their own villages. Have you ever wondered why we don't see villagers traveling? I think it's because the pillagers pose such a substantial risk that it's simply not worth it. They have everything they need in their villages, why risk death just to go on vacation? There are some interesting implications of this. First, it prevents villages from developing a more advanced intercity society. If villages were able to work together and trade, then they would have a much better chance of regaining control of the badlands and extinguishing the illagers. Without that, however, villagers can't easily evolve as a collective species. Did a villager just invent a game-changing technology such as explosives? It doesn't really matter because they can't communicate it to another village. They can't conscript an army using tax money because they can't have a government. We're getting a little bit closer to understanding what the illagers want. We know that it's in their best interest to suppress the villagers and that sometimes they even aggressively slaughter them. But the pillagers are just the tip of the iceberg. To really know what the illagers are up to, we must take a journey to the true heart of their operations, the Woodland Mansion. The Woodland Mansion is an exceedingly rare generated structure, inhabited by vindicators and evokers. Mansions are sometimes found tens of thousands of blocks away from spawn. They are built in one of the two dark forest biomes, places with wide, short trees that create a thick canopy of leaves overhead. The mansion towers above all, three stories high. It's one of the largest and most advanced structures in the overworld. Its architecture is majestic, with wide hallways, sweeping staircases, and tall ceilings. There's an artistic flair to it all. Subtle patterns on the walls, supporting arches in the hallways, and in general, a high level of craftsmanship throughout. It's the mark of a prideful and adept architect, sculpting buildings as beautiful as they are practical. Structurally, the mansion is more complex than anything we see in the villages, and although it's similar in size to some of the monuments, it feels quite a bit different stylistically. The mansions contain a huge variety of rooms. Let's explore and see if we can learn about the vindicators and evokers that live here. Illagers need to survive, just like the villagers, and they accomplish this using indoor farms of melons, pumpkins, and mushrooms. There are forges to construct the axes and other equipment. We can also find several types of bedrooms, much more ornate than the simple dwellings of the villagers. Some even have closets. There are storage rooms, libraries, and huge tables for discussion. A map room offers a clue as to how the illagers plan raids. But there are also rooms in the mansion where their purpose is a little less clear. A strange pumpkin head surrounded by minecart rails. Rooms with no entrances or exits hidden within the walls. Lava encased in glass and a room with a lone tree whose entrance is sealed off from the hallway. A chamber with fences and a checkerboard floor. Rooms cultivating various types of flowers. And then there are the locations that have a more sinister tone to them. There are several different types of prisons, some of which even have redstone-operated locks. There's an arena of sorts, with tiers of audience seating. Is it for friendly boxing matches? Something tells me that's not the case. They also have these strange altar-type rooms with cold stone and draped banners. What are they for? It's not immediately obvious. Our explorations of the mansion slowly paint a picture of its inhabitants. The illagers clearly have their own developed culture, different from the villagers. There's one trait that jumps out to me. The illagers are independent thinkers. They try new things, they discuss ideas and make plans. It's already paid off for them. They have the most luxurious living conditions in Minecraft, and they have advanced weaponry. They're the most powerful group of overworld mobs. There's something else about the illagers that's a bit weird. They're very interested in symbols. There are rooms with huge wool animal statues, such as of a duck or a cat. Are they just good sculptors? Perhaps, but what's a little bit stranger is they have many sculptures of themselves. We've seen this earlier. Pillagers had a specific banner on their faces which was draped over the outpost and carried by the raid captain. But it's taken to another level in the woodland mansions. It's above their staircases, in gallery-like rooms. And there's a giant three-dimensional statue of one of their heads while holding a torch. Hidden inside the head is a single lapis lazuli block. There must be something special about the graven image of themselves. They wouldn't do this for no reason. That's the question we keep coming back to. Why? Why are they preventing the villagers from developing? 
Why do they keep building secluded mansions? Why are they acting as such a chaotic force in an otherwise mostly peaceful overworld? Let's take a closer look at the remaining illagers we haven't covered. Vindicators spawn in the mansion and they wield axes. They are the workforce behind the illagers. They chop down wood and they are probably responsible for construction of the outposts and mansions. Like the rest, they are more than capable as warriors when the time is right, but that doesn't seem to be their main job. And then there's the evoker, a wizard of sorts. In the Minecraft universe, there's clearly some type of magical force. We see it with enchanting and potion brewing. The evokers, however, appear to have a much deeper knowledge of this magic than anyone else. They can summon spectral fangs to attack enemies from the ground, as well as vexes, which are strange, sword-bearing ghosts. They're the only mobs known to actively summon other entities for help. Illagers have discovered something new about how magic works, which grants them unique powers. Maybe we can figure out what that is. Magic in Minecraft has structure to it. For example, enchanting is not random, it doesn't just happen out of nowhere. It requires energy in the form of experience. And although experience can be gained through actions such as smelting or mining, killing a mob produces much more, sometimes an order of magnitude higher. What we're seeing here is a system where death is the primary commodity. To enchant weapons, the most effective way is to kill other beings. So for those who have no qualms about it, destroying other creatures is a great method to gaining magical power. I think what's happening is the evokers have realized this, and through their studies they found a way to harness this power. What's the catalyst though? It's the Totem of Undying. The Totem of Undying is a very unique item in Minecraft. It allows the user to survive one fatal blow. In some sense, it offers control over death, the final and most powerful of fates. If death truly is a big source of magical energy as I've suggested, then finding a way to hold death's restraint in physical form would be an extremely powerful capability. I believe that this is a result of the experimentation by the Illagers. It's one thing they've been able to do that is completely unique to them. We may be tempted to think that the primary use of the Totem of Undying is to escape death. And while that's certainly true for the player, I'm not sure that tells the whole story for the Illagers. If the Evokers are trying to escape death, then why don't they use the Totem in battle? That's what leads me to believe that the magical capabilities it possesses are much more valuable than simply staying alive. Sure, a few extra hearts is nice, but why waste the totem just to delay the inevitable? Although we don't have an explicit explanation as to how the totem works, there are some subtle hints. First, let's examine its appearance. It looks to be a statue of an illager head. Notice the large nose. This would make sense from the clues we've seen in the mansion. The totem of undying may be the result of their experimentation using wool statues. There's something else about the totem. The eyes are green. At first, that doesn't seem strange, as illagers and villagers both have green eyes. But the totem of undying has a much brighter tone. It's a similar color to something we talked about a few minutes ago, experience. Since experience can take the form of life force draining upon death, then wouldn't the totem of undying need to be powered by vast amounts of experience in order to prevent death? As I said earlier, Minecraft magic doesn't just happen. It always requires energy from somewhere. Why would the totem be any different? If this is true, then the implications are deeply unsettling. Suddenly, the illagers' actions towards the villagers make sense. Illagers are so much more powerful in combat than villagers. Without the player, the villagers only have the iron golem to protect them, and even that would be destroyed after several waves of a raid. If they wanted to, the illagers could wipe all the villages off the face of the planet. But they don't want to do that. Why? Well, villages are a great source of experience. Any player will tell you that. Trading, harvesting crops, and smelting all generate experience. Experience that's ready for the taking when the time is right. Consider, the illagers keep the villages separated so they can't develop new technology as a society. They do, however, allow the villagers to survive on their own as small towns, farming, working, and reproducing, all the while slowly increasing their total stored experience. At a certain point though, the illagers band together and form a raiding party, releasing the villagers' experience through death and powering their totems. To the illagers, villages are nothing more than farms. They need to be self-sufficient, but not to the point where they're capable of mounting a collective defense. They feel no remorse over destroying a single village, as there are many more for the taking. But they certainly don't want to extinguish all of them at once, as it would spell disaster for their magical quests. There's a long-term benefit to keeping some villages alive. Let's think bigger. The Totem of Undying is very powerful. What might they be trying to do with that magic? Well, one option has to do with teleportation. 
I explained in a previous video the timeline of the end, you can watch that using the card above. To give you a quick recap, I think that in the grand scheme of Minecraft, villagers and illagers are relatively recent developments in the world, showing up after all the portals were closed and all the builders died. There is evidence that illagers are attempting to find a way to teleport to other dimensions. In the Enderman video, I propose that all interdimensional travel always requires at least two things, heat and hard materials. The illagers might not have quite understood this, but they were at least on that path, such as with the lava encased in glass or the obsidian spheres. The smoking gun, however, is an extremely rare secret room that sometimes occurs in mansions. This room is shaped like an in portal room. There's TNT, silverfish stairs, and a chest with ender pearls. Were the illagers trying to solve the mystery of the in portal using magical force? I think that interdimensional travel was just one of their many projects. It seems as though they managed to replicate a spawner in one of their rooms, solving one mystery of the overworld. Another room is that which has blue wool and piles. There's a famous theory that they're trying to create Steve, as he has the same colors in his clothes. The evokers can summon vexes using the totem, why not a living, breathing character? If they had control over death, could they create life? If we want to take this a step further, what if the player is the result of their successful experiment? We're starting to get into some of the thorny existential questions about Minecraft, which are well beyond the scope of this video. I don't know for sure if this is what the illagers were attempting to do, but I do think that they saw the totem as a tool, not as the end goal. They recognized its power and enacted control over the villagers in order to maintain that power. I can't see your faces right now, but I guarantee that some of you are looking at me like I'm a lunatic. It's always good to think critically whenever someone proposes a theory, don't just blindly accept it as truth. As with all theories, we need to find any leaps of faith that we've taken or issues with our evidence. Those of you who really know Minecraft will have already found a problem. Villagers who are killed don't drop experience. This would seem to disprove the idea of illagers using villages as experience farms, and from a literal perspective, that's true. However, I'm inclined to believe that this is a gameplay decision, not a lore decision. Hear me out. Why would every single mob, players included, drop experience on death except for villagers? This is especially weird considering that experience is clearly an important part of the mechanics of villagers. I think the purpose of this is to encourage players to trade with the villagers instead of just killing and looting any village they come across. I'm not sure why else villagers would be special in this regard. Maybe that explanation isn't good enough for you, but that's my thought. Let's ask another question. If the Totem of Undying grants magical powers, then why can't it be used by the player? I think the answer is as simple as the player doesn't know how to cast spells. Remember, the illagers discovered this stuff through years of experimentation. I think it's totally reasonable that the player wouldn't know what to do with the Totem. It's worth thinking about though. Another thing that I've implied but haven't elaborated upon is the idea of illagers being outcasts. It's not unreasonable to think that the villagers, whose lives are ruled by routine, might think poorly of people who think outside the box. There are instances of this beyond just the illagers. The wandering trader, for example, doesn't follow the rules of the village. He wanders about with his llamas, selling bizarre items. He also displays the skin of his hands, something that no quote-unquote traditional villagers do. This is same for illagers. When attacking, we can see their hands. It's a subtle detail that I think is important. Another outcast is the witch, probably kicked out for obvious reasons. Illagers seem to at least tolerate witches. They can join patrols and will spawn in raids. The witch does not seem to be an illager though, as she has none of their imagery in her hut. Still, witches do work together with illagers when it benefits them both. So there we go, that's my theory. Let me know what you think. I'm not claiming that this is absolutely correct. Rather, the purpose of this video is to start a discussion. Hopefully together we can begin to solve the puzzle that is Minecraft. If you're interested, join the Discord using the link in the description. We've got a great community and it's a fun place to discuss videos and theories. We'll end with that. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day.